John Steinmetz. How are you guys doing tonight? You guys are up and awake? I'm retired. Uh, I was a police officer for 35 years. But now I'm a stay-at-home dad with a 34-year-old. And uh, <laughs> what are you doing here? You're 34. They're like boomerangs. I remember, you guys probably remember, my parents had an exit strategy for me. You know, they knew exactly. It was almost like you're being paroled from prison. You know what I'm saying? All right, you did 18 years here, son. Here's one suit, 10 bucks, and a bus ticket. Go find a job out of the house. You know, the kids nowadays, they just kind of stick around a little bit. I, I don't make good life choices anyhow. Like, for example, when I was 48, I had another kid. <laughs> exactly. I'm telling you right now, I looked on the warning label on Viagra, and it didn't say anything about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it said you could have a stroke or a heart attack. And, and I was just shooting for a stroke, and uh, <laughs> now I gotta find out if Medicare pays for braces. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I remember when he was turning two, or about two, and, and I'm sitting there going, and my wife goes, well, you gotta go teach him how to pee. And I'm 50 at the time, and I said, honey, I sit when I pee now. <laughs> right? So damn comfortable, you know? <laughs> you guys, you women have the monopoly for years, you know? <laughs> you've been hiding it from us. And then us, we get over 50 and go, oh, yeah, so that's what you've been doing in here. <laughs> this is comfortable. Oh, this is comfortable. Oh, <laughs> the water's cold. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to wake me up, yeah. Better get on Amazon Prime and get those testicle spanks. And... Uh, <laughs> Man, I, uh, I'm, I'm older than most, some of these guys here. I'm, I'm turning 60, and I'm a little scared about it because uh, uh, everybody, says, everybody says, 60 is the new 50. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not. It's 60. <laughs> it's just this much closer to Medicare and Metamucil and those more discounted tickets you guys get at the theaters, you know? I can't wait for that. I'm thinking that's a terrible analogy. What is, what's next? Hey, don't worry, hospice is the new, you don't feel so well, you know. It's ridiculous. But anyhow, my wife's already told me I'm going to die before. Right? There's statistics like that, right? Guys always defy, die before their wives. Is that correct? I mean, it's kind of like that. And you know why, right? It's murder. Because it's, <laughs> apparently I have sleep apnea. And, uh, and uh, my wife says, I have to nudge you and make you breathe like that. And I'm going, ah, that's the secret. Some of you dudes are not going to get the nudge. <laughs> <laughs> he died of natural causes. Uh, did you give him the nudge, man? Yeah, man. Nah, nah. <laughs> I have one of those memory phone pillows. You know, you ever see those? That, you know, they, they make, and I found my memory phone pillow with my face on it one time going, And my wife, she scares the dickens out of me because she's a forensic scientist. You see a side? You know what those people are? Yeah. Bad people. Every, you know, every so often I wake up with a toe tag on my foot and <laughs> I know I had done something wrong the day before, you know? But uh, it's great. I, you know, I was a, a cop for 35 years and uh, I love it where people used to say, hey man, uh, you know I pay my taxes? That means I pay your salary. And I go, thank you very much. But it doesn't go all the salary. Some goes to equipment, like this taser. <laughs> Here's your change, bam. And I uh, <laughs> just want to give back, you know? I just want to <laughs> give back to the community. Well, I thought if I invented a device that's like a taser, uh, except when you shoot somebody with it, it caused an orgasm. Think about this, ladies, we'll test of this. If I hit a guy with this, he's down for like 12 hours. He won't fight twice a night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He'll be all curled up in the fetal position. Oh, okay, leave me alone. I want to sleep. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. <laughs> She's going, yeah, I know. <laughs> Just wouldn't work on women. Women would be running into police cars all the time.
Mom, why are you doing that? Mama needs a little love from Popo tonight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I worked narcotics for a lot of years, and uh, I wasn't, uh, I, I didn't know anything about it when I first got there. Like the, the first time my boss gave me $10,000 to go out and buy some marijuana. You know, I, like that. I said, okay, and I came back, and he says, where's the marijuana? And I go, right here, and I put a dime bag of weed out. And he looks at me, you got a dime bag of weed? He says, I'm not a good negotiator. I never, <laughs> that's why I became a cop. I don't do this well, you know? First time I bought cocaine, I, did, I didn't know the metric system, uh, you know, because it deals in grams and, and uh, kilos and stuff like that, you know. So I went up to this drug dealer. He says, how much do you want? And I go, a teaspoon. <laughs> oh, no. I have no clue. But I, I'm, you guys got medicinal marijuana out here because I've seen the they have pharmacies out here in Sun City all over the place. I could tell because there's all those little golf carts in the drive-thru. <laughs> you know, I, I thought they should have just legalized it uh, because as a cop, I found potheads too easy to catch. It'd be, I remember this one guy grabbed his weed out of his pocket and I just like this and I go, is this your weed? And he goes, nope. <laughs> Mine's in the other pocket. People, it, it, I remember we would sit around a jack-in-a-box restaurant at 2 o'clock in the morning, and it, it's actually not very fair. It's not fair for the potheads and the drunks. It's like fishing with dynamite. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, but those, those two tacos for 99 cents are like lures for potheads. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come here. No, put the... So. I remember driving around with my firefighter friend, and uh, we were in the fire truck, and I said, what are those people doing? And he goes, they're waving at us. And I said, with all their fingers? <laughs> I'm not used to that, you know? <laughs> what are you doing? I, one of the other things is, is I, whenever I, I guess I have a cop knock whenever I go to people's houses, like if I went to your house. Uh, and I knocked on this, uh, you know, I, I, and I knocked on their door, this person's door, and they yelled, who is it? And I go, it's Don. And then I heard their toilets flushing for five minutes. <laughs> and I go, dude, I'm just here to pick up my kid. You know, I can't. <laughs> but people do weird stuff. Like, uh, the, you know, I have the situation where uh, people will tell you stuff now that they wouldn't tell you before, you know? Like uh, the other day, somebody says, hey, you know, I just smoked some weed and I'm baked which means they're hot. And I go, thanks, good information, mom. Get back in the house. <laughs> this whole texting and driving thing, have you guys seen that? that isn't that insane? So, and they're gonna enforce laws like that, and I'm thinking, well, wh what do you do to enforce the law of uh, texting and driving? How do you do that? And I thought about it as a cop. I'll just roll up on them, run their plate, and text them. <laughs> Of course, nobody talks anymore. They just text every single time. They go, hey, uh, uh, wh why'd you pull me over? I go, because I can. <laughs> Smiley face, you know. Hey, I'm Don Steinmetz. Thank you very much. Don Steinmetz, folks.